welcome to day 14 of our advent calendar and today I wanted to share with you a really lovely story. Um, so it's a Zen Buddhist story that I found and I think it may have been passed through by Osho as well. It's a really special story I found, I connected with it quite well because it, it's for I think when we're in a kind of place of heaviness or darkness and that in our lives. So whether that be on a small scale or a big scale whether we're holding darkness in ourselves just because we're having a bad trot right now or having you know going through a bad situation we're losing control or whether it's been a more longer term thing and we're kind of feeling more of a depression this story really highlights um or guides us in, in a sense uh, towards the tools that might help us to kind of escape this darkness or to overcome this darkness. So it really resonated with me when I read it and I would love to share that for you guys today. So um, go ahead and make yourself really comfy, really cozy, get your tea, get your warm, like make yourself warm, whatever it is you need to be um, in the mood to receive a beautiful story. All right. So I don't know if I mentioned this, but the name of the story is The Eternal Chase. Here we go. All right. So God made the world, and from that very day, the sun went running after the darkness. The darkness could not understand, it is as, it, as it had not harmed the sun. It had not even talked with the sun. It's not even met the sun. And yet the sun is continuously harassing her. After millions of years of harassment, she finally got tired and she went to God and said, Yeah, it might be an ungrateful thing to complain, but there is a limit to everything. And I've been harassed for millions of years now and I just I can't conceive of any fault on my part. The sun goes on expelling me from everywhere. It's even difficult to take a rest without anxiety that the sun might be on its way, that the sunrise might be close. I have not slept for millions of years. The anguish would not allow it. The sun has been almost a continuous torture and without any reason. I simply want to know what have I done wrong. God said, You should have come earlier. There was no need to wait so long. This is very ungentlemanly on, on the part of the sun. The sun should be called immediately. So the sun was called. He asked the messenger, What's the problem? Because I haven't done anything wrong. I simply go on doing the same routine every day. Since God made me, I haven't done anything else. But the messenger said, God is very angry. You have been hurting and harassing a poor woman, the darkness. He said, my God, I've never heard of her. I've never even met her. I'm not interested in this woman at all. And I'm a born celibate. I'm going to come. I want to see who this woman is. And as the sun came to the house of God, the darkness disappeared. God said, where's that woman gone? And they searched everywhere, but darkness could not be found. Millions of years passed again, and one day the woman appeared and she said, you haven't done anything. It's still continuing, the same torture. And God said, you're a strange woman. When the sun was here, where did you go? She said, you're behaving like a simpleton. If the sun is here, I cannot be here. If I am here, the sun cannot be here. We cannot stand each other. You will have to hear our story separately and then decide. God said, well, that's just not my way. You both have to be present here so that I can be certain that nobody is lying. And then the woman said, then it's better that I take my complaint back. Since then, the woman has not appeared again. Once in a while, the sun comes to inquire what happened to the woman because I just want to clear it up. It's become a worry on my head that someone is being hurt by me, perhaps unknowingly. And God said, no, you need not be worried. The problem is such that it cannot be solved. I cannot give any decision unless you are both present in my court together. And I have listened to both sides in the presence of each other. But by the very nature of things, you cannot both be present. That woman is your absence. So of course you cannot be present and absent simultaneously. Drop your worry. You are doing perfectly fine and that woman is not going to report against you again. The file in your case is closed. Exactly the same is the case with Mara and the Buddha. The moment Buddha arrives with all of his light and his beauty, with all his awareness, with all his joy, then Mara disappears, dissolves, 
and conflict is impossible. Okay, so I think with that story, the main, a lot of the messages that came out pretty clearly for me is that, um, you know, when we're, f when we're full of darkness, one of the, the main keys or the main ways to get rid of that darkness is to bring the light into the life. Um, where there's light, there cannot be dark. Where there's dark, there cannot be light. And so, you know, I guess when we're talking about darkness, it's those heavier, lower emotions of anger and fear and worry and anxiety and um, sadness and all those kind of things. That's the equivalent to my darkness. And for me, the light is, is the joy, kindness, compassion, love, um, friendship, you know, all those kind of things. Um, so letting more of that light in is naturally going to help to get rid of the darkness. So just as you're sitting in the daylight, it is possible to go inside into a room and to close the windows and to make your own or to find yourself again in darkness. It's also possible to be surrounded at nighttime by darkness, by complete pitch black. You can let the light in by going to switch on the light bulb. Um, so I guess in essence, it's how do we bring that into our own life you know when we're in those times where we're in the kind of lower emotion when we're having a bad day when we're having a bad week when we're having a bad year how do we go um how do we go about switching that light on so that we can move into a better state or a better frame of mind and bring ourselves through to the other side um and i mean for one thing one thing for me to remember is that we don't really you know, it's not about having darkness is a bad thing that we just want to get rid of and we just want to suppress. You know, we go through these states for a reason. We go through these times for a reason. And if we can be aware of them, if we can reflect on them and just be conscious that they are there, they will help us to achieve or to, they will, they will help us to get to the next stage in life. They will help us to improve on our life if we are able to listen in the sense. So it's not about suppressing these um, these states and just pretending that they don't exist or fighting them or anything like that. It is important. It is important to go through them, but also how can we then start to turn those lights back on again, if that makes sense. And for me, there's so many different things to do. And I know when I'm really stuck in the darkness, when I'm really in a bad place and I find it very difficult to get out of it, most of that time I'm I find that I'm in a place where I'm in my own head too much um, I'm so con you know I'm so stuck in what's going on for me and how bad things are looking how my future has no potential how worthless I am how useless I am how unlovable I am you know all these things these really heavy issues start coming into my head and I get stuck in them it's very difficult to see past them even when I'm actually, the conditions that I'm living in are pretty good, I can be stuck in this cloud of um, negativity. And the quick, one of the quickest ways I've been taught to come out of that is to draw, you know, bring my mind away from me by looking at the people around me and trying to do something for them. You know, trying to find ways where I can give to them, where I can help them where I can be a shoulder to cry on or someone to listen to, just to, um, you know, sit and have a conversation with, where I can assist um, and make their lives somewhat better. So by doing that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking my mind out to the people around me. And just by doing that, it gives me something back. It gives me something positive, a positive feedback loop and it brings that lightness into my life and there's so many other things you know any kind of meditation practice is super important it allows me to be reflective it allows me to um, strengthen my mindfulness and my awareness to be able to even recognize when i'm in a situation and what's happening in that situation why i'm in that situation and where i need to be or where i need to go to get me out of that situation so practice is super important especially during uncertain times like we have had this year you know um, gratitude practices compassion compassion is such a strong way to switch from these lower feelings of darkness to a 
higher energy feeling of love and light. Um, compassion is beautiful. And then just daily practices, dancing, singing, um, swimming, walking, whatever, riding my bike, running. Any of those things are going to um, just give me that little bit of extra help to kind of bring my energy up. And one of the most important things for me is to try to take things day by day. So doing things step by step by step, staying present, not going too much into the past, not worrying too much about the future, no matter how bleak it might seem, just staying step by step in the present where things are okay, where I can do something to bring the light back in to my life. And um, lastly is the beautiful Buddhist teaching of impermanence is to know that no matter how long it seems that we're sitting in the darkness, the darkness cannot stay there forever. The sun will rise at some point, the sun will come through and just to, to stay aware that this is part of something. It's, the, it's our key to our spiritual growth and to having a better life. So have faith in yourself that these times will pass, better times will come and you will be a stronger person for going through it. So thank you so much for joining in and listening to our story. And if you, if you like this at all, please give us a like below and try to share this around um, so that we can spread this beauty to um, as many people as we can. Thanks again for coming and we'll see you tomorrow for day 15 of the Advent calendar. Mm-hmm.